This is showing you here, if you mm -hmm. were using soft rock phosphate, how much you'd need to get another 10 mm -hmm. parts per million. But you get down here to boron, you've got four tenths of a part per million. You're trying to get it up to two parts per million where you'll have solid stem, clover, and beans and everything. And you'd have to add 45.8, then this is kilos, but just pounds per acre. This is kilos per hectare. But don't put 45 don't pounds, pounds of, of borax, borax to the acre, no. Boy, you'd be in trouble, wouldn't you? Yeah, you, you want to build that in gradually. Mm -hmm. And all of these traces are that way. You can't put this much on without just serious co consequences. Yeah, you're going to throw it off balance the other way. Yeah, you have to dribble them in gradually. The only one you can put uh, the full amount in is like rock phosphate and lime and gypsum. Mm -hmm. He's saying to make up the adjustment from where we need to be, like with the boron. Mm -hmm. Don't pile it on. Yeah, I never give this sheet to my clients because mm -hmm. they sure enough, why am I just doing a little bit? Let's do it all. And mm -hmm. They'll really, it'll be a, a big a mistake. So like 25% of the yeah. time or 10% of the time or how much? But this gives you uh, an idea of the, it's possible to calculate your fertilizer recipe to a fair thee well. Mm -hmm. You can get pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, you definitely get in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's things like this that you cannot do it all at once. And boron's just one of the examples. So if we wanted to get the boron, like it looks like we need roughly 50% more boron than we have most places, we would do that in like four stages or something? Or? Oh, more than that. Okay. So, uh, you really want to put out about a box of borax, which you'd buy at Ingalls, mm -hmm. per acre, mm -hmm. per application. Unless you were putting it out with humic acid, then you do it more like every quarter instead of every month. Mm -hmm. If you're putting it on with humic acid, you can put it on once a month. And, and especially you... on established plantings. Mm -hmm. If you're putting it on seedlings, because the way this works, your, your, your silicon transport system, the lining of your capillary vessels, is silicon and it's got four reactive electrons. But boron, which has an even stronger attraction for silicon than aluminum, is only got three reactive electrons. So it leaves one of silicon's electrons unsatisfied. And that's what draws the fluids up through the capillary system in the plant. You know, it's, it's actually sucking on the soil. Mm -hmm. And if it sucks strongly enough, it'll get it up here to the tip. And in the brightest, like hottest day of the summer, your squashes, cucumbers, alfalfa, whatever, don't wilt. When you see them wilt in part of the field, you know that part of the field needs boron. That's cool. Yeah, did you see that often? Oh yeah, that's sure. pretty yeah, yeah. standard. You'll see that in squash real, real commonly. Yeah. You'll mm -hmm. see it in tomatoes see it and in cabbage even. Yeah, you'll see it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Terrible that we haven't seen. So that's it. Okay, so basically, maybe <coughs> a, tenth, a tenth of the total required for t at a time. Oh yeah, a tenth would be just maxing out. Uh -huh. okay, usually. So more like a twentieth. Yeah. Well. Basically about three pounds to the acre per application. See, a, lot of us, a lot of this is just going to be row application, so it's going to be very small amounts. You know? Yeah, with something like that, you can take it in a watering can and go down. That's how and, we've done it, but I always did the full amount, which I guess I won't do anymore. <laughs> well, if you did the real full amount, like is recommended in the recommendations here, then you'd, you'd max out. But the trouble is, on a plant that's this big, then you add that to the transport system and it lodges in the xylem cells. Mm -hmm. And it's got a big transport system, but you do it to a seedling mm -hmm. and it's got a very tiny transport system. 
And then what it does, we tested this in Australia. We burnt our, our uh, zucchini seedlings and our bean seedlings, cucumber seedlings. So we took some of the burnt leaves and sent them to the lab and they did not come back high in boron. They came back high in sodium. The boron lodges in the xylem and it creates sap pressure, but the sap carries the, the sodium and it pushes it out to the leaf margins and sodium's sticky and it doesn't come back. Mm. So it builds up out there and it burns the margins of the leaves. Whereas, if it's a bigger plant, then it's not so much sap pressure for the size of the mm -hmm. transport system and then it doesn't do that. So I had somebody that had listened to one of my lectures and heard me say 25 kilos per hectare, this is like pounds per acre, 25 of humate stabilized boron, which was only 3% boron, whereas solubor is 21%. Well, he, in his notes, he took down 25 kg to the hectare and boron. Oh boy. <laughs> so here he's going to do his mango orchard, and he puts 25 kilos of solubor, which is a sevenfold overdose. He puts 25 kilos of solubor on his mango trees. Then he calls up and he says, the bark is splitting on my trees and my fruit is splitting open. What do I do? Well, first I had to find out what he had done, but then I found that out, and I said, oh, he's got too much sap pressure for his transport system. What he needs is a stronger transport system. So I said, look, I know this guy, and he's got a dump truck and a bobcat. If he went to that diatomaceous earth mine, there's a big deposit there in Mount... Uh, Mount Garnet in far north Queensland and got a dump truck load of diatomaceous earth and crushed it up and put it on like he was icing a cake, then he'd build a stronger transport system and that would satisfy that excess of boron. And that's because of the silica in the diatomaceous earth? The silica, see, because it's the ratio of silica and boron. And so when you've got too much boron, add more silicon and you'll adjust the ratio back to where you need it. So that very next day, that's just what he did. And he, the irrigation system watered it in and it saved his orchard. Cool. And it I would even... Have thought that would have been toast. I would have thought there was no saving that. Well, it even saved his crop. Uh -huh. And the next year, because he built it into the fibrous, you know, uh, sapwood of his plants, Man, he had a oh, bumper crop. Man, he had, he, he gave everybody in our office a box of mangoes. Thank you very much. It's the best crop of mangoes I've ever harvested, you know, so on wow. and so forth. I said, yeah, I, I said, <laughs> I said, I understand how this worked, but I wouldn't have gone there to get the best crop of mangoes. <laughs> a, bit, a bit like skating on thin ice. Yeah, yeah, really, so. yeah. <laughs> really is. Skating on thin ice, thin ice with some acid below the ice. I guess. Yeah, something like that. Oh, it's pretty extreme. So could I, you add your borax to the uh, compost and make it more available? Oh, I'll add some, yeah. yeah. And you got to know where this goes, okay? You can pee on the grass out here. And if you do it in the same spot long enough, you'll burn the leaves on your clover. Mm -hmm. Because the strongest attraction in the whole periodic table is the attraction between boron and nitrogen. Here's carbon right in the center of your periodic table and boron's over here and nitrogen's over there. So boron nitride is what the tiles were made out of for the space shuttle. And the problem never was the tiles overheating. The glue wasn't strong enough out. to keep the tiles on. 
And that's why we had, uh, uh, yeah, burnt up over Texas. Because the glue wasn't good enough, but the tiles, man, they could withstand any heat. All your high-speed grinding operations are boron nitride because diamonds burn up and become carbon dioxide. Much to the disappointment of Zsa Zsa Gabor when her mansion burned down. <laughs> her diamonds all became carbon dioxide. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go hit this car.